Um, okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Milos. Uh, I hope you know me. If you don't know me, I'm a debater from University of Belgrade. I'm here today to talk to you about the extensions and uh, like one of my favorite positions and one of my favorite things about uh, the debating in general uh, is uh, coming up with this, uh, with extension and something. This I'm gonna cover mostly talking about how me and my partner Yanko usually do extensions and talking a bit more about like strategy and practical tips uh, plus something additional on the adaptation on, on how, how, how you grasp what is happening in the debate or not. Um, if at any time you have a, a question, uh, you can, like, I think the best way is just to, to, to type in chat that you have a question, or you, you can also type the, type the question in the chat, and I'll read it out. I think that might be the best, uh, and uh, then, then I'll try to cover it. If something is unclear that I'm speaking about, uh, or I'm speaking too fast, uh, please interrupt me, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat, and I'll try to explain it in a bit of a different way. I hope you will understand. I'm also ESL, so uh, sometimes uh, the words do not come as easily. Uh, but yeah, uh, without further ado, I have around an hour 15, hour 30. So, so let's get going with this lecture. So honestly, uh, yeah, let, let's start. Uh, so as I, as I said at the beginning, the extension is like my favorite position uh, in whole debating, especially a uh, member of the opposition and member, member speeches in general, because it gives you so much agency to some extent to choose uh, what you want to do even though it doesn't it doesn't seem like it because uh, people people in the top top half are kind of deciding where the debate is going it, it gives you so much uh, so much of an ability to to actually win the debate outright they have to deal with a lot of uncertainty uh, in their speeches and you have uh, the whole clear picture in front of you uh, and this is why thinking strategically and like analyzing like where the chessboard stays uh, is at this moment is so important in the in the extension speech. Uh, so let's start with the, let's start with the prep time. Like I think that's the best the best thing to start with, and like let's go chronologically throughout the debate and what happens in a debate. I think that's the best structure for this lecture. So how do we prep? What do we do for the extension uh, in in general? Uh, and that's what people usually ask. Uh, so we have a couple of strategies right like one is first to 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 how do you say me and my partner have a common paper usually i am writing because i have a bit of a better handwriting or something like this where we're throwing out almost any idea that comes to mind what whatever we can talk about in this debate uh, let's talk about this and we usually are analyzing you know from different kind of positions or where the debate can be heading and where the debate could be going uh, if the debate is heavily reliant on a specific setup or something like this, uh, we are also kind of discussing where is it likely to lead uh, in the top half. So the thing that we are discussing is what is the likely setup that is going to happen uh, of the debate? Like what is the likely model or something? Is what would we do in, in, uh, in, instead? Uh, but if not, if the debate is like a general debate support supposes or something like this, uh, we usually just outline whatever we can think about. Uh, and we usually do that pretty fast, like in the first couple of the five, six minutes, we can add on top of it later. But then the second discussion, which is the why I'm talking to you about this, because this first part is obvious, is that we start discussing, uh, one second, sorry, what we think uh, is uh, the highest probability of people that people will run. So we run, uh, we write on a piece of paper even the most obvious things. And then we try to talk uh, uh, together with my partner. I try to talk about the framing and already try to talk about uh, if they run this, uh, how can we position any of the other things? Like basically we try to play uh, the game in advance and try to see how it would play out. So imagine that they run this, this first point that is the most obvious. How can we minimize that point? How can we say that this point is less relevant? What, what is the strongest point that would counter this point uh, from our position? And that's how we are already from the prep from the prep time, trying to talk about differentiation towards our opening, trying to anticipate what they're going to do. Uh, and you're usually trying to do that with the most obvious and the most straightforward extension, uh, uh, the most straightforward case that they're going to run or something like this. If they leave you the most straightforward case, 
you didn't really waste your time uh, because then you have the straightforward way to victory uh, because they did something weirdly or something like this. But if they actually do, which in most cases you are anticipating good opponents or something like this, that they are going to cover this, uh, then you uh, then you can quickly, how do you say, first of all, get the feeling uh, of, how do you say, uh, uh, like get the weaknesses of that case outright in a dialogue that could not otherwise happen during the debate because you have to focus, you have other things to, you have to write your case or something like that. So just talking about this in advance and just comparing two, three things uh, is very important. But also it, it, it shows you uh, when you're in trouble, right? In some cases, uh, we do realize, okay, this motion does not have that much. This motion has two, three points or something this uh, the next and 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 then uh, this gives us a second thing that we can do if we cannot think of many things uh, that can win us the debate right and this is the first the first purpose is like as many things uh, as we can if we can and usually uh, like just for the frame of reference usually we think of like let's say five six seven things or something like this that could be run obviously not all being the strongest one we just throw the ideas and we will think about the strength of the idea a bit later as, as i told you in the comparison to the strongest idea on that list. Uh, but if, if we realize there is two or three, the next step that we're doing is, fuck this, uh, let's go in depth on these three. Can we somehow break down, is this kind of a point, like, is this some sort of a larger point um, uh, or, or something like this? Like, like this will bring, uh, how do you say, uh, more, uh, how do you say, less polarization or the, like this point will bring less, how do you say, more economical benefits or something like this. Can we focus this somehow? And that's what we're talk talking in prep. And then we're trying to already talk about the crucial levels and layers of analysis that an argument can have. Why are we doing this? Uh, in particular, because that uh, uh, gets us that even if the team in front of us uh, gets the, the most obvious point, like as I said, uh, let's say that they want to prove this something will, will ruin the economy or something like this, given that uh, any of these usually broader, larger points can be broken down into like smaller points that you can and then better analyze and that you can then focus on, uh, that can lead you to discovering the analytical extension during prep time as well, or something like this. And it all has to deal with uh, you realizing where you're going to have troubles. Like, is it, uh, is this is this thing deep enough? So then we talk about, the, then, then let's talk about how do we position and frame our case versus the others. And that's the 15 minutes of the prep time. Or is this, uh, is this a more, is this more going to be one on maybe one or two main clashes? So let's think what is the best contribution towards this class? What is the most important thing that one needs to prove? And then already with, 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 with my partner, I can start talking about how to like 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 basically pick apart and talk about aha, if they analyze this particular first part, how can we diminish their contribution? How can we explain why what we are going to do this third fourth point, some in depth analysis, maybe more impacting, maybe going into a specific group? Why is that the most important thing? But that is prep time. That's the most important thing in prep time is to already discuss with your partner, with the two of you, how do you position your case and position yourself uh, in, 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 this, uh, in, in this field and in this sort of situation. Uh, at the end, near, nearing the end, if we already can have kind of, like the more you do this sort of thing, the better you become at it and the more time you free up for other things. And if you free up for if you free up time for other things, the also the other important thing which we usually do at the end uh, is mostly talking about the other side. What is the other side uh, going to run, and how does that clash with our ideas? So we're already trying to compare and try to position everything that we now talked about in the in the vertical sense versus the diagonal or versus the, the closing government if you're closing a position to some extent, uh, like trying to anticipate, okay, what 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 is the best case that they can run uh, in, in this sort of situation? But, but the mindset that, that you need to have implied is in almost no circumstances you are, uh, how do you say, developing arguments very like far. You're mostly talking with your partner about how to position this versus the other things. How can we position this? And if you can't position this, then it might be a signal that this is a bad extension that you should deprioritize it. You should prioritize something else. Uh, but this conversation needs to happen. Uh, and I think most of the people are doing it a bit, a bit differently uh, in, in that sense. So, so that's, that's to me a productive uh, closing half closing prep time. Uh, and then what you're doing is like, you're standing with this piece of paper 
uh, which which you 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 should have probably uh, done, uh, as I said, which has like a couple of several things that you think are going to be run. Uh, or something is I usually enumerate them. And usually the good and important thing is that that paper for me will be then used to communicate with my partner throughout the debate uh, much more easily than, than, than in the other cases. So the extension speaker also has the, 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 the uh, how do you say, importance of uh, uh, you need to synergize with your partner. You need to be able to communicate properly what are you going to do before you do it. It's quite different than top half where your partner, even if you they don't know what the fuck you're, you're doing, they can run completely something different and it's completely fine. Uh, the communication throughout the debate is crucial. And the best way to communicate is to have some of these common things that you can always refer to, right? So in the sense, uh, if my uh, opening half, if, my, if I'm closing opposition and I have seven things that I wrote on my piece of paper and opening half does one, I can literally cross it out uh, or I can ask, for example, my partner, ah, is this gone or is this not? Is number two gone? I don't have to do a full sentence or anything like this. I can point to a piece of paper and tell him, do you think this is gone? Are they going in the same direction as us or not? Or something like this. And then we can, based on this particular paper, literally communicate even in advance, what are we going to uh, to run or not run? Uh, which is, again, it sounds like, a, sounds like a trivial thing, like who cares? Or it's most important to do a speech. No, uh, like communicating with your partner, you knowing and being on the same page might be the most important thing that you can do in closing half and in doing well. In this sort of situation, so even though it sounds trivial to you, uh, please do this <laughs> as well uh, and, and, and communicate like that. Uh, there is a, but let, let's not talk about now. Now that we've gone through like prep, because like prep, prep is the less less important part uh, part here. Even though it, it's still important to have a correct mindset when you're talking about this. Let's talk about delivering the uh, like. Wh what do you do when the debate starts? And uh, that here's the here's another another common mistake that usually happens. People wait a long time to start writing the extension that you are that you're trying to, to do. Like the more uh, usually uh, within uh, like the, the 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 how do you say the quicker you start writing your extension, the easier it will be for your partner to give you feedback and for you to uh, to actually focus on other things. Focus on the how do you say. Uh, focus on, on what other teams are saying, focus on rebuttal, focus on framing and on strategy on some of the other things. So in that, if, in that sense, it's very important to start writing as soon as possible, but, but how soon? And let's talk about that now. Uh, like, I mean, the soonest possible, uh, the, the soonest possible is to start to already, <laughs> even in prep time, uh, but that's just in the cases that happened to me maybe twice in my debating career. And that is when we knew we have a very unique, uh, unique case that we definitely are going to run because we cracked the debate very well. And in that sense, there is no no really need for me to wait. I know what other teams are going to run. I know my, my, my extension is going to be creative and I know uh, where am I going with this? And I, like there, there is there is always a small risk that somebody still uh, like has the same creative idea as you. But if you're in that, that's why in most cases you don't do this. But I don't know. Like this happened to us when we had a debate in uh, in it was Oxford IB. Uh, it was Oxford IB quarterfinals. The debate was about uh, the debate was about uh, as a young talented young individual who wants to change like uh, the country, you, would you join the ruling party or would you uh, fight outside the, the system or something like this? And the framing that we've come up with in prep is that, how do you say, by joining the ruling party, the ruling party will corrupt you and you will become a bad person inside of it. And we thought it was fairly unique and that people are not going to talk about in that uh, talk about it in that sense. So I already, I had almost, almost written extension halfway through the prep and throughout the, the prime minister's speech, I, I, I had a full ability to concentrate on what other people were saying and filling out the other things. So the best case scenario, you start immediately, very rarely happen. This is just the extreme that I'm mentioning. When, when do I usually start? Uh, so I usually start halfway through uh, my, uh, halfway through uh, the speaker that is, uh, the first speaker of the side that I'm on. So leader of the opposition, if I'm uh, closing opposition or, Prime Minister, if I'm if I'm closing government, that does sound early to you, right? And there are some uh, consequences that can go with that. Uh, but bear with me. Let me let me let me explain to you why. So, uh, as I said, uh, usually 
uh, you will get the feeling approximately of what teams will do in the first couple of minutes of their speeches. Like, like at least you will know the way that they're thinking about stuff. And that's you, yeah, and, and that's where you should take some bold, bold risks, right? If you know that if you have seven things on your piece of paper and you see them going in a, some direction, right? You obviously in some of these uh, extensions, you will probably have another direction that you can take the debate with. Uh, yeah, I usually pick first, like these safer points, which I feel they're unlikely to touch uh, in this sort of situation. If I still feel that there's some points that they might touch, I might push it off for later, but just feel my second extension, my second argument in extension or third argument in extension much earlier. Why am I doing this? Uh, firstly, uh, for, like, like, I mean, obviously, obviously you still have to listen to what they're saying. Uh, so there is like, a, you need to kind of practice to write at the same time as listening and as noting down something. So my setup is usually like, uh, let, let me let me just finish the time and then I'll talk to you about the setup. So what I usually do, uh, so, so, so that there is there is huge benefits to this, right? Uh, if you can write almost half of your extension speech during the leader of the opposition speech and your closing opposition, you can fully focus on everything else. You can, uh, you can uh, how do you say, for one, uh, listen to other speakers better. Two, I give, and this, this is usually the purpose of this, I usually give my paper towards Yanko in this case, or any of my partners that are whips uh, when I finish writing them. Why? Because then they can glance over and pretty much see how am I going to deliver my speech. They can pretty much imagine, especially if we debated for a long time, uh, they will pretty much know uh, what am I going to do? What does that mean? That, that means that this person now can even start writing the whip speech in front of everything else, at least the parts where they will fill your uh, your things and these like, like creating a template for what they're going to whip. And secondly, they can also start thinking of positioning your case versus the other cases because they approximately know how are you going to run the things that you're right, running, right? So it's very important to have that as early as possible because everything then your thinking starts to be... Uh, uh, focused on comparing what you already have with anything that that's where usually pe people uh, where, where the most growth in like weighing and comparison can happen usually it doesn't happen because you're focused on other things and the way to uh, free your mind to be not be focused on other things is to finish uh, what you need to write much sooner than you do obviously there are risks associated with this the risks are one that uh, how do you say the the, the speaker uh, does does cover it in the last minute of their speech or they, they, they backload uh, DPM or DLO does most of the things or something like this. Uh, first of all, that's that's kind of an overstated fear in terms of that it doesn't happen that often. If you're really scared, it should be mostly on the individual basis. If you know the speakers and you know the second speaker is much better or you know their style that they're doing something like this. But even in so case that this is a risk, this is not a risk that is like a huge, right? Uh, in, in the absence of this, you would be just sitting there and listening to a speech. You would not be doing much. And anyway so in a sense uh you are potentially saving time and let's say that there's 50 percent you, you anticipate there's 50 percent chance that they run this in the second speech or something like this you still have 50 percent chance that you during their second speech can uh, tidy up and do whatever the fuck you want so i think that risk is a is, is a good risk to take or something is and as i said if you want to minimize the risk, start by developing the extension, which you think is there less likely to uh, to develop and less likely to, to go towards. And uh, the more risky parts, let's say that they're kind of touching on like your out of a seven, out of a, that kind of touching like the third point or not, leave it for last, uh, like let it develop a bit more and then and, and then think about it or something like this. This is where you, yeah. Uh, so this is, this is, this is, the, this is the, the reasoning. But let's talk about the setup. Uh, and this is the very important thing, and this is where I will give you also the, the exercise that I think can work in this particular scenario. Uh, so it's kind of like a multitasking thing, and you need to be, become better at this, especially as an ESL speaker. Uh, this is very hard, right? It's very hard to, at the same time, write and concentrate on what people are saying, right? And this is something, uh, but the good news for you is that this is a, uh, this becomes much easier with practice. Uh, but the practice needs to be targeted towards this, right? Some people find it more natural. Some people don't find it more natural. Uh, but like with any multitasking, anything that you have to do, you need to focus your mind and try your best to do this, uh, to, to, to do this in this research. So my setup is twofold, right? I have two pieces of paper next to each other when, when, I'm, when I'm debating. The one on the left hand side, yeah, you, you don't have to do the left hand side, who cares? But like, I'm just gonna say, tell you how, how I do it. On the left hand side, I have the empty piece of paper where I kind of write 
the main crucial points uh, that my side is saying, like, and also the other side. But for the purposes of the extension, the most important part is uh, is what your side is saying to some extent. So, so what I write uh, what I write down is not necessarily the full argumentation. But once I hear the reasoning, for example, they say, "Aha, they have three reasons for something." I'll note that down fast, and then I'll return to my to my extension. So I have a piece of paper where I can pretty much note down the bare bones logic that they're talking about. And you will notice this majority of the speakers, um, you can. Uh, how do you say, condense their speeches and their, their the main points of their argument into four or five uh, main main words and sentences that you can write on a piece of paper, even though they're talking about it for like two minutes. Uh, usually that's like filling time. Um, and you, you will notice this is, is, is the more that, you, that you're going, like they, they're trying to make it pretty, but on the bare bones, you, what you want in that piece of paper is very bare bones logic. What do they claim? Uh, where is this claim based on? One, two, three. Okay, uh, this is very important because for if, if, if you need to do analytical extension or if you need to uh, differentiate yourself or if you need to use some different words because sometimes psychology is a, is a strategy when you're picking the extension, not using the same words as your opening might uh, trigger a judge to not uh, think that you're derivative or something. Else. That's a very important thing. So at the same time, I have the left paper, I'm doing it and in any downtime that I have, I'm partially listening, obviously, and also writing what I can, what they need to, what they, what they need to do in this sort of situation. And I'm very, very, very focused, very focused on this. The exercise for this is is pretty much uh, just doing it, uh, doing it on the more on the under more extreme circumstances. This is pretty much practicing tracking. The way that I like to think about this is uh, how do you say? Imagine uh, like play a speech, uh, pick any speech, prime minister speech, and uh, just uh, how do you say? Uh, at the same time, uh, like prep, uh, prep for leader of the opposition. At the same time, take notes of what prime minister is saying, and uh, deliver uh, like write your speech for leader of the opposition in, in this sort of situation. You, and it's 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 as easy as that, in my opinion. Uh, just just putting yourself in that situation yourself. Uh, the the good thing about this exercise is pretty much that you can. Uh, increase the difficulty however much you want. You can give yourself additional tasks. So at the beginning, you can give yourself tasks to just write your speech uh, during their speech, uh, during their speech or something like this, uh, or uh, that you, uh, the uh, next thing that can be that you also need to write rebuttal towards that speech whilst writing your full speech or something like this. So for example, you prep, but you don't do uh, you don't write anything on a piece of paper and you start writing as soon as the prime minister hits the floor and then you uh, then you practice like that <laughs> you're basically practicing um, multi <laughs> multitasking to some extent uh, the important thing is also to check yourself uh, because in this tunnel visioning you're probably going to at the beginning miss some comprehension miss some things that the prime minister is saying so it's important in the first couple of times that you're checking yourself and for example uh how do you say uh, and after you've done the exercise, replaying the prime minister's speech and seeing how much of it did you get right, how, how many of these things that are important did you miss, or something, so you compare yourself against that. Um, the next, uh, the level up of this exercise, as I said, can also be in the speed up. So I think you can you can literally play the prime minister's speech in the higher speed, like one one point two five or one point five, and uh, do the same thing that I said. Write your speech in parallel or something like this. Uh, this is all the things that that makes you make you become better. If you ever listened to audio books or something like this, and you start to become annoyed by how slow it is, uh, <laughs> like I like I, I now cannot listen. Like if I listen to audio books, I mostly listen to them. Like I'm not I'm not a maniac. I don't listen to two times uh, the speed, but I listen to like 1.5 or something like this. But when I return to 1.0 or something like this, it's so slow. I can track everything. It's like the time slowed for me or something like this. So just like this, uh, Maxine, if you ever experience this, this is pretty much similar uh, inside of the debate, right? Like, like I learned a lot uh, from uh, trying my best to concentrate on people who speak very fast and, and being able to understand them at the same time, right? So just by writing and training your brain in that way, you should become much better. And it's uh, one of the fundamental skills as an extension speaker because multitasking, writing at the same time is listening to everything that they're saying, is, everything that is happening and trying to comprehend everything that is happening, knowing when to stop writing, knowing when is it time to, to maybe write a bit more here, when is it time to communicate with your partner. It's a fundamental skill of extension that, that people underrate. People don't realize how important it is, but it's actually one of the most important things. 
that you can do. Uh, so, so that's the, that's the thing. Um, okay, question. Mm. So the problem is the problem is uh, two, three four points. Uh, <laughs> Usually there is a there like so the question the question pretty much is for people who cannot see it is what if, what if, what in the situation that your opening has three to four points and you have only one extension uh, how you should, how should you compare the extension towards everything else it's a I think it, there's a simple answer a simple answer to this if you have one extension uh, it better be a winning extension to some extent if you have one extension uh, then your burden is very clear you need to prove that what you're saying is the most important thing. Uh, in the world, right? The most important thing to, for for a, for a speaker for for a judge to think about, right? Uh, which kind of uh, like comparing one thing to to one thing to one thing uh, is kind of how do you say uh, contribution wise? Uh, contribution wise, if if, if you're doing uh, if you're doing one extension, contribution wise, the strategy is the same as comparing one to one versus one to fifty or something like this, uh, because the strategy of having one extension is this is the most important thing. Uh, in the round that we can deliver, nothing else matters. Metallica uh, and uh, how do you say, uh, like, like everything, everything else is unimportant. That that that, that will be my strategy. Uh, then you you better you 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 pretty much has to have to have a framing uh, that would explain. Like it's, it's a bit of a hypothetical. It's very hard uh, to, to to grasp in that situation. But uh, you need to have a how do you say, uh, you need to have a good framing of why. Is the thing the most important thing in the world, and that's why you decide to have one extension, or or, 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 or something like this. The other answer to the question is usually when people have three to four points, uh, they underdeliver most of them. Like they have one or two maximum very well developed points, and they have third or fourth point, which is like maybe two three seconds. The way to compare against that is to talk about like they clearly they, to to pretty much you can call them out. Like you can use what what uh, what the other teams from the other side said about them and say this is pretty much underdeveloped. I don't know what like like most teams uh, can't deliver that many things very well. So in that sense. Uh, it's again kind of like comparing, like, like the, the ultimate comparison will come down to one versus one or one versus maximum two, or something like this. So, so yeah, I know it, it's it's a bit about theoretical questions. So I can't like like it's it's not it's not really uh, about the, the specific thing. But I, I hope this this kind of answers it. Um, but but that's the that's the thing that you need to that you need to talk about talk about with your partner as well during prep time. Uh, why is this like every point uh, that you talk about in prep should be the debate winning point to some extent, right? Can we, uh, the first thing is, can we win just by running this? Can we prove that this is the most important thing in the round? And everything else that comes afterwards uh, is just add addition, just like uh, like uh, hedging our bets. Maybe if they don't buy this point, we have two other points that we talk about. But I usually approach debate uh, like this in any case, like a, you, you usually should approach the debate. Like, I think it's kind of rookie to think about, ah, I'm having three or four arguments or three or four points. Usually the debate boils down to one major theme and one major point that you're trying to prove. And all of the other things are just like, ah, let me burn. Like if I'm opening, let me burn some turf. Let me, let, what do you say? Uh, let me, uh, yeah. Uh, but, 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 uh, but, but in, in a sense, that's, uh, that's, uh, that that would be the answer. So where where was I? Uh, I was talking about uh, the, the 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 writing and, and all these things. So so let me talk about like something that that again might sound boring to you, very important, very crucial, <laughs> uh, and that is that uh, your papers and the way that you're writing your extension needs to be readable to your partner. No matter like, like if you if the other world other world cannot see it, maybe it's even better if, if we ever return to in-person debating that that's a benefit. But uh, to, to the extent that your partner needs to be able to be handed this paper and reasonably take away what are you going to run for this. Uh, the test for me is usually can my partner with just reading this paper not talking to me come out with this paper and deliver the extension somewhat reasonable. It doesn't have to be like the way that I would envision it, but somewhat reasonably. Why is this important? And that's 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 what I usually preach uh, 
uh, preach to people uh, and people don't really listen. Uh, papers are not just for you. Papers are not just for, how do you say, uh, papers are very good and important, especially as an ESL speaker, to remind you to have a specific words, uh, to not stumble, uh, like, because like, like usually, you, usually that's the way that you usually waste time. But it's also a great way to communicate with your partner, especially in closing half, where your partner needs to know what the hell is going on before you go into the stage. If the only time that your, that your partner will know, uh, and, and usually people think it's enough, Ah, I'm going to tell my partner what's the tagline of my argument. So he knows what argument I'm going to run. No, your partner needs to know much more. Your partner needs to know what your mechanisms are. Your partner needs to know are you how are you impacting this. Your partner needs to know about your framing, right? Learn some of these things. First of all, because he can give you inputs, right? They can. They, this person can, can tell you, ah, I think you should add this mechanism. I think you should add this impact. Two people are better than one in this sort of situation, right? They can criticize your speech because they, like, like they're, it's, it's much better that way. But second of all, they can prepare in advance anything that you want uh, that, that, that is needed to win the debate, right? The, the way to win the debate from the extension, you cannot ever think about just like the tagline, right? You have to think about the way that your partner has proven it. You have to think about the specific examples, the specific impacting that your partner has done. And if you only have, and it's the first time that you're hearing your speech, uh, your partner is hearing the first time as the other teams in the room are hearing the speech, that's a problem, that's a risk, and that's why usually the whips are not as utilized as possible, right? Because then with knowing this, your partner can start thinking about how, where you would be attacked. Uh, if they know you very well, they will also know where where you will fuck up, right? Like even if you write something on a piece of paper, uh, you don't deliver all, all, always uh, everything the way that you wanted it, right? So if your partner knows you really well, they can know like, ah, I know this part, my partner is going to fuck up. Let me write that down immediately and let me know in advance that I need to fill this gap or something. They can, they can be prepared and ready for this thing. Papers are a way, way to communicate during the debate where you can't really retell the full speech to your partner because that would take you seven minutes, but they can glance at the paper in like 30 seconds, read everything and be like, okay, I'm, I'm on board. I know what, what, what we're running. Or they can say, no, uh, please change this or something like this. Um, so let me, let me read the question. What would you advise for online tournaments? I tried to write my partner's extensions whip speaker, but I couldn't polish his speech. Uh, here's what I do. Like I'm usually extension speaker, but I spoke a couple of tournaments with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, with people who do extensions, so I had to whip. My strategy is always to write in parallel with them and uh, not to write them a speech, but to write like the skeleton of the argument, like like not, not to feel feel all of these things, and the same way give them this paper to write. Usually, the the most like that's why I hate like in online setting. Uh, the most important thing, in my opinion, if if at all possible, is to be in the same room with your partner. For me, at least, it's super difficult to do anything else, uh, and I'm not the best person to answer uh, to to answer uh, how to deal with in online in the online setting. If you can be next to your partner and emulate what you would do in person, uh, you have even more synergies than you have in person because uh, there you uh, because you're muted, you can also talk to your partner very openly. You can comment on the debate very openly, which you couldn't do otherwise. So if you can be in the same room huge benefits. I, I Like I saw it in, like I didn't do many speaking tournaments, I mostly judged, but I saw tremendous differences if I was in the same room with a partner or if my partner was somewhere, someplace else in terms of the communication, uh, being at hoc. If you're debating at Worlds and, and Euros, it's very much worthwhile investing in, in being in the same place. Even you know, if you don't have a place that you can fit together, like, I don't know, <laughs> rent <laughs> or, or do something just to be in the same room, it's, it's super important. It's, it's super crucial. Otherwise, my my solution potentially is to do the same thing just virtually, which is to take a picture, scan, uh, or, or do something of your paper, but just make it a bit, then you need to make it a bit more readable than you would do otherwise. Uh, in a sense, I still, Honestly, I still prefer handwriting to anything else. Uh, it's much more like fluid. You can much more uh, like deal with the surface level of a paper than anything else. So it it, it is hard. I don't have the I don't have the full answer to your question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope I hope some of these things help. But please just just try and be in the same room. You will see a lot of improvement. Uh, a lot of improvement just from that. Uh, one more. Uh, one, uh, one more thing about like the. Okay. So so. 
I've talked to you about the importance of this, but what does this, what does this mean? What am I talking about? First of all, you cannot write more. And, and, and this, by the way, uh, Mike, when my coach did this to me and, and told me that I need to change my shit and change the way that I'm writing, uh, like I didn't understand it. Uh, I didn't want to do it, but uh, he pushed us. We changed the way that we're writing. I improved tremendously. Like I'm now an infomercial. I know I sound like a commercial, but I'm doing this because I know people don't listen to me when I talk about these things. Uh, why people don't listen to me when I talk about these things? Because it's much easier for you to continue doing what you have been doing this whole time, right? It's much harder to relearn some of the skills that you already think you have, which is to, to, to write on a piece of paper, right? But it's actually is super important and crucial skill. What is the important thing? First of all, a couple of maxims that that you need to that you need to follow one paper one uh, one paper per 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 argument mm, at minimum never bundle things together like even if you don't have uh, things to populate the full paper fuck it leave the space open or something like this just don't cram things i see so many people uh, doing like like one uh, how do you say one two three four five in one one place the problem with this is that uh, i know i know i know what you're thinking is like ah it works for me because i i can do a lot of things from my head i improvise very well uh, the problem with this is one esl speakers inherently struggle with this uh, because uh, inherently struggle with this because uh, how do you say uh, thinking on the spot anything that distracts you at that time uh, you will fuck up <laughs> something is, uh, sometimes like, you can do the same strategy if you've been doing with the fully written paper you can let yourself go and go with the flow or something like this but just have something that will if if need be remind you of where you where you ended and what you need to where you need to continue uh, secondly, like, and that's minimum, right? Sometimes I write two, two pages per one argument uh, or something like this, but like never mix two things together because it will be much, much, difficult, much more difficult for people to read. It will be much more difficult for, for you to read and for you to organize the way that you're talking about. And that's the important part. I'm not going to go much more in depth than this. This is the, the, because all of the other things would require me to show you some of the papers that I do, but like Obviously, larger, larger, uh, how do you say, writing, uh, writing with like the, the how do you say, uh, how do you, how do you call it, like tight letters rather than uh, the, the, I don't know how to call it in English even. <laughs> uh, so, 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 it is important. You can figure out your style with your partner. Important test. If if you if you're not sure, if you, if you are not sure, just talk uh, talk with your partner. Uh, talk with your partner uh, about like give them a piece of paper and see how much they understand and then uh, give uh, give up on that feedback uh, like work up on that feedback that that is the best way to do it uh, again it might sound trivial very important what is the question the question is is there an optimal ratio of rebuttal in the extension speech towards the opening team or should this be mostly given to the whip speaker depends uh, like it, there is no clear answer in, to most of these uh, these things that's why I'm avoiding it uh, you can you can not have any rebuttal, especially if uh, like very much depends whether this thing is detrimental to your case or not. Usually, my preferred style of rebuttal is to not have ten points of rebuttal or something like this, but to actually focus on two or three fundamental points from their side and take it down in a different way. Also. What I usually like to do is think uh, when, when I'm seeing uh, opening half and closing government, for example, if I'm closing opposition, what I like to think is uh, everyone has their own different rebuttal style. And if you know your partner well, you know kind of how they're going to rebut a certain point, right? If you think uh, you have a unique contribution uh, that is that is that that is like like you know how they're going to rebut this. Uh, you have your unique style of how you think this should be taken down. Then you should take this. Uh, this is my test. This is my test. I know how Yanko responds to certain things. I know what he will prioritize. So in the sense, I'm uh, while anticipating that and while thinking about how my partner is debating, I'm also trying to anticipate. Aha! Uh -huh, that's why I specifically am going to uh, do two or three of these particular points that I think are super important or whatever so uh but th there is no you should not do more than three minutes ever that's the like that can be a max maxim uh the only reason why you would go for more than three minutes 
that I can think of is if you absolutely have no extension and your strategy is just to destroy the other side and uh, be like a rebuttal extension shooting for the second uh, with no, like pretty much no, no, no material that is going to be labeled as extension. It's a very rare case. Never shoot above three minutes. Usually my speech in the extension is divided into, I mean, three parts. One is the first time is the setup, contextualization and framing. This is the most important part usually of my speech, which is like two pieces of framing of where this debate, what this debate was missing, what this debate uh, was not about uh, or what, what it is about. Then going to a bit of rebuttal and then afterwards going into my speech. And usually that ends up around, I start to give my extension around 2.30, uh, maybe three if, if I really don't, uh, don't how do you say, um, if I really, uh, really had a lot of, usually not because of rebuttal, but usually because I had a lot of setup, usually I had a lot of contextualization that I need to get out of the way first. Uh, but that, that brings me good into the structure a bit now, because we've covered some of these practical things of how do you come up with things and what, what, what happens. Now let's talk about some of these, uh, how do you say, important uh, skills as an extension speaker as well, which is, so you have a debate that happened in front of you. Uh, and you're making a call, right? In that case, you're making a call. What is the best strategic, like basically like any strategy game? What is the best strategic move for me to make or something like this? Uh, and there's a couple of things and a couple of uh, mistakes that people that people are making. One uh, is uh, tunnel visioning, like not willing to let go of some of the, some ideas. And that's the adaptation part that, that I'm talking about. Sometimes uh, something happens very late, maybe close, like especially if closing government is a very good team, it completely changes the game entirely. And that's a very scary situation. What I usually people see people do is stick with what they intended to run, even though it doesn't make any sense anymore because the debate completely changed uh, after, after they've done a specific framing or after something like this happens. So first of all, you need to be able to track and notice these things. Uh, but second of all, you need to be... <laughs> You need to be fine with letting go of your idea. Even if you wrote it down on a piece of paper, you need to be fine with being like, yeah, okay, this is burned. Okay, this is doesn't this does not matter anymore. This this debate has shifted towards something else or something like this. So this is like a more of a psychological thing. You need to, it's not your baby. It's 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 like a fucking uh, idea that you had. Who the fuck cares? Just let it go. Uh, it's for the sake of the debate. It's it's I, I, it makes people uncomfortable, but that's that's the way that, that's the way it needs to be. Uh, but the adaptation also needs to happen in terms of uh, how do you say uh, usually needs to happen if people uh, have mostly covered what you wanted to say and what you wanted to do, uh, especially in the top half, or uh, they have done something unpredictable. So now uh, the things that you would even have as an extension are not really as relevant uh, or, or not. Uh, so, so here is the here is a couple of mental things uh, exercises that I that I like to do uh, to 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 help me <laughs> uh, to help me get through this, and I, I do this very automatically. I don't I don't really think about it that way. But recently, I was able to sum it up of, of what I do, and usually call it like zoom in, zoom out principle. Uh, so it it has a flashy name now as well. Uh, usually, people tend to tend to look at the debate very uh, how do you say two-dimensionally, which means that uh, the debate about legalizing drugs is debate about legalizing drugs. Debate about uh, the politics is debate about politics or something like this. Uh, uh, debate about specific things that, that the motion said about feminist movement is debate about purely this, not necessarily having any connection towards the other things. And sometimes that is correct, sometimes that is not correct, but too many cases, you miss a crucial extension by not being able to do this strategy, which is, to zoom in and zoom out. Let me talk about let me talk about the, the, the two now. So zoom out is uh, uh, let, let me talk about zoom in because because it's a bit of an easier concept and people get it a bit a bit better. Zoom in is being able to uh, inside of the inside of the, the mess and everything that is happening focus on a specific thing that is the most important that people have been talking a bit more generally about. Let's give, let me give you an example. So very recently in a debate about. How do you say uh, in a debate about and, and that that's also by the way uh, a case for many feminist movement there are many movement debates uh, zooming in zooming into a particular issue is, is the way to go uh, I think it was LSE the motion was the motion was uh, 
political consumerism, uh, good or bad, support political consumerism, which is uh, you, you consume based on the like, people boycotting companies because of their political views or people buying co from companies because of their political views. Most of the people who are focusing on, ah, more followers, less followers, that's so nice, companies are good or bad or something like this. Uh, but they have not really talked about like zooming in, uh, how do you say, specific territories or specific countries or what changes these countries need, right? They were talking very... Uh, in, in that, that's like that happened in 99% of the rooms, and that's why opposition won in 99% of the rooms because the argument that says uh, people see a commercial and then uh, they know about feminism and then that's good uh, usually wins if you don't have a very cool counter from government side, uh, which lots of people didn't have. So, what is the zoom in in this sort of situation? We pretty much zoomed in into uh, why <laughs> it's kind of. It's kind of not like, like now really it's kind of it's kind of uh, uh, taking both zoom in and zoom out but to some extent we zoomed in towards the issues of how do you say Serbia Bulgaria Turkey uh, any any country uh, any country that is not America and talked about how these commercials are perceived in these kind of countries and why these commercials and these how do you say not commercials but like these kind of uh, political messaging sent by corporations is not something that benefits at all any of this versus, and then in com contrast towards a more general debate about them donating to Pride Parade in LA, uh, then like having a balloon there or something, this has zero impact on Serbian LGBT movement, uh, but actually has harm on Serbian LGBT movement because Serbian LGBT movement is associated with something that is like that, that is, a, or, or a feminist movement is associated with the Gillette commercial or associated with, how do you say, uh, with uh, with some, something like this. So usually people look at it very surface level. I use this example because usually people do it very, uh, usually people do it in this way, which is like, ah, developing world, developing world. Ah, there is many ways to zoom in and zoom out uh, or zoom out in the particular subject, in the particular debate. And usually the way uh, that you're then framing your case is just to talk about not, literally nothing else matters everything else is bullshit everything else is very like it has impact but it's not important right in, in a sense like obviously some some uh, lgbt uh, feminist movement getting like uh, lgbt pride parade in la getting money sponsorship from uh, from coca cola is cool for them we don't get it get it as, as a negative side we just think it's unimportant in contrast towards how to say this hampering the ability of the feminist or or lgbt movement in uh, serbia or in country or, or in countries that how to say actually require some structural change to uh, to combat uh, for their rights or something like this so that's the way that that's the way to do it like it's pretty much focusing on a particular thing uh, on a particular thing. Usually people caricature this kind of in these, these days, which is the zoom in is purely literally almost always going to be uh, into how does this affect minority communities or something this. It's not necessarily, again, the only zoom in that you can do. Zoom in, uh, again, can be geographical, can be talking about like, look, this might have an effect in the West. This might do something in the West. Who the fuck cares about the West? They have much less problems than most of the other world has. You can also call out people who are very much western centric in their debating which is most of the debaters when they're talking about this and it doesn't have to be it doesn't really have to be honestly i am giving you social justice examples but this pretty pretty well goes with uh, with politics with uh, economics or something that's usually the maxims uh, the maxim uh, that i have uh, uh, for for economical and political debates is whatever idea and that it fits more for the opposition usually uh, because that's how the motions are phrased. But this is like, there's some idea of how we need to conduct politics or what the politicians need to do or something like this. The thing to think about is how would this be done in, in my country? And obviously if you're not living in, in the West or something, like this, how will this be done in Serbia? How will this be done in Turkey or something like this? And then so many arguments why this will be done horribly pops up. And then so many problems pop up with that that gives you an extension or something like this. So just uh, um, having a bit of a different context and shifting the context, basically zooming in from a from a like from a narrow-minded like generalized view is very important. Uh, even more importantly, to some extent, is zoom out, which is being able to see how the policy that is being proposed affects more than again 
the, the thing that, that you're talking about. I had a very like recent example of judging a debate. Uh, I think it was about Sin Cities. Uh, yeah, so it was a debate. Uh, I don't know if you know what Sin Cities are. I'm going to explain it briefly. It's literally having, a, how do you say, uh, having free zone to, to like, like, like basically legalizing drugs, alcohol, gambling, everything in one city, uh, similar to how Macau, uh, how do you say, Amsterdam or something like this. Uh, operates and the, the the motion pretty much was this house would in the in the cities that are permanently like uh, like for a long time poor this house would establish the same cities or something like this and like people were struggling with uh, extensions uh zoom out like and everybody was talking about these cities and how it will be in these cities and like like it's very uh like like in most debates like i've, I've seen this debate now three or four times being debated. In most cases, it's just going to be about the sin cities. Zoom out in this case is to talk about a bit of a broader picture, right? Especially, let's talk about the example from the government case, right? Uh, let's talk about that even, even uh, that you can do an even if case, that even if the, the crime and everything is centralized around the one city or something like this, that pretty much in, like, in moving towards one city, that pretty much means that in other places, crime will probably be down. That pretty much means that the criminal activity will move and centralize into one particular place, like being drug drug capital or something like this. So it will centralize and help some other communities or something. Like this. Obviously, this is not a silver bullet argument. I'm not saying this is the best argument ever, but I'm telling you that zooming out a bit towards like a more global picture or, or what, what can it do for, for other layers that is not necessarily have to deal with just thin cities itself, gives you an extension, right? And thinking about and trying to, it's a very hard mentality to 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 adopt uh, because it's not really not really natural, right? It's not really uh, something that we do. We see a topic and we immediately want to go around that topic or something. Is but the approach needs to be: you see a topic and you start to see what is the what what is what is the bigger picture of where that topic fits in the world or something like this similar what you can do is when you talk about like like political moves and what political parties are doing or something like this, this can be tied towards uh, like if you zoom out this can be tied towards uh, how do you say the investment coming into the country how external people are will look at at your country if you if you if you do specific thing if you do specific policy in ir in politics or anything like this uh, will it increase their chances of investing or not investing or something like this. I'm just giving you a couple of examples. There's obviously not a correct answer anywhere. Sometimes debates are very two-dimensional, but in most cases, all the debaters are doing is two-dimensional or maybe a small zoom in towards uh, the, 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 how do you say, minority case uh, or, or social justice toward, to, towards that extent, but not really knowing how to do any other maneuvers, right? And seeing the bigger picture in one sense or being able to zoom into a specific detail that is super important, that is super relevant for the debate. And in that sense, it's, it's, it's a, how do you say, it's a missed opportunity. So that, that sometimes, that, that mindset in 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 majority of the cases will fix uh, the inability of not having the extension. It's very rare, uh, and that, that that that's the point, right? Even in shallow debates, like people are just not that good. Uh, like it's not like new debates are not no, no, they were never that good. Very rarely you will encounter a debate where you have a situation. Like I think it was it happened maybe three times in my life that I was really hopeless and I had re literally nothing to run. One of them happened in Thai in Thai worlds actually, uh, but 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 it, it's very it's very rare rare, rare that, that things things happen. Usually you could have done something differently and you could have explored some other things that come to mind later. And the thing that you need to do is train your brain to find these solutions much more easy, much more easily and just force yourself to, to look at a bigger picture or to look at a smaller picture uh, if you can frame that this picture is, is the most important thing and that, that other people are, are missing the debate. And that's the second, and, and, and so that's the zoom in, zoom out principle. Uh, zoom in, zoom out principle that I think is, 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 is important. The second thing is that you need to have a dedicated space uh, to, uh, how do you say, frame what you're about to say. Usually people look at it from the perspective of opening opposition said this, we're gonna say this. No, in most cases, I don't do that. That's not necessary. That's not even what people are saying when they talk about differentiation. You're kind of differentiating towards this, the whole room. If it's easy for you to, to talk about what opening opposition said and then see what you're gonna bring, sure. 
most cases, the most important thing is the beginning of the speech giving framing of why the, the thing that you're talking about is the most important, or why can I say we're gonna focus on psychological aspect of, of, of this policy? We're gonna focus on how they say how does this affect the developing world? Like, like just talking about why specific reframing or recontextualization is the most important. This is what sets you apart in the debate. Uh, and this is very important to come very early at the beginning of the speech while the judge is still fresh and listening to you. Uh, or something like so 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 yeah you should look at it that way but also you need to look at it uh, even people who do it do it a bit wrong in a sense that they think it's enough to say two sentences we obviously think it's, it's important or something some of the framing is obviously some of the framing that you're doing is obviously like easy and you, it does require two or three sentences or something like this but in some cases uh, in some cases in most cases you you do need, need to spend some time analyzing it the way that you would do argumentation, which is at least 30 seconds of explaining why that framing is true, why if that framing is true, it's, it's how do I say, it's the debate winning thing, and then going into your own case. So it's kind of like a setup that people are missing, right? And that that's what separates, that's what separates the, the, the good extension speakers from, from the okay the, the extension speakers. Extension speakers, have the ability to be like the, the narrators of the debate. Like they're literally coming into the debate with full knowledge, especially that that's why I love closing opposition, with a full knowledge of everything else that happened. Uh, and you have the ability to now play your move. And it needs to be a story. It needs to be something uh, that, that a judge is, huh, so here is how we come into play or something. It's not just I'm going to uh, have three extensions and these three extensions are going to be, and I'm not talking about the rhetorics. I'm just talking about positioning the even cutting a point is worth uh, uh, cutting a point of three, three points of your extension is worth having a bit more minutes talking about why these points are the debate winning ones in contrast to what's everything else that has happened in the debate. So as a good extension speaker, you also need to have a good grasp of what has happened in the debate. I mean, there is no good practice for this. The, the best practice is to judge more, I would say. Uh, judging more has made me a much better extension speaker in that sense, because the most important thing is that the extension speaker, to some extent, is the way speaker as well, is to be able to notice who is winning the debate and what is happening, what is the stance before you before you enter the podium, because that will give you, that will give you a lot of insights into what your strategy should be, in, in a sense. So you need to know approximately uh, what's the ranking at the moment and what do you need to do to win uh, in, 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 in this sense. You can, uh, the ways to practice it if you want to practice this particular thing uh, is also to give yourself particular, how do you say, a uh, bit more tougher tasks, right? Uh, in terms of pick a debate, uh, like I said, pick, pick, pick a debate, pick, pick a very good debate, right? Uh, with the speakers that are much better than you and, and then give yourself a task to, 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 to just be closing opposition. Be, be the closing opposition in one of the finals or something like this and see what you would obviously, the, the debate that you haven't seen before or something like this and see how you would adapt if people are very good and stole most of your ideas or something like this. So it's something that, that people think cannot be practiced at home, but it can be. And it's better to be practiced at home. You cannot practice this at a tournament. And that's the thing that, that people don't get. If you want to get better at, at how do you say, extension speaking and at noticing who is doing better or who is doing worse or something like this, the best way is, is to do it in the, in the like, with the way to, to how do you say, pause the video, with the way to, to sit down with your partner and do like some real time talking and be like, okay, uh, like imagine like like you 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 can do something like like after each speech you have two minute debrief with your partner where you talk about okay what has happened now who's winning now at this point and you're talking about your opinions what is the most important thing to rebut what would you focus on how does this change so just trying to practice uh, and and how do you say get yourself in the mindset uh, which is important and like like learning how to think on the spot needs to first happen slowly it needs to first happen uh, with you how do you say talking how do you say with your partner in a like a slower manner in a, in like a setting that is not we need to break uh, we need to get the two points or we are not on straights or and then we don't break and then blah 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 who cares uh, you're not never going to improve at that stage so 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 a lot of these things that i'm talking to you uh, like and, and that's that's a bit of a more meta meta thing as well. Uh, workshops, watching workshops, and all of these things don't mean a lot if you don't uh, act upon some of these things by 
implementing some of the changes or implementing some of the practices. And that's why most of the things that I'm talking about has to deal with like the exercises and the actual actionable things that you can do. Uh, just because most of the other things is you're gonna forget. You're never gonna. You're not gonna remember what I said. But if you if you take away something from this lecture and take away, aha, Milos said, I need to uh, talk with my partner about the readability of my papers. Cool. That's first action point. Two, I need to practice tracking or something like this, blah, blah. That's my second action point. That's that's the important thing that you need to take away. And most of these things is you practicing on your own. That's how I got good. Um, how I got good. I was never very, like I, I was, I cannot, I cannot deny, uh, I cannot be like I was super, completely not talented. But I was not as talented as, as the other people. Yanko is much more talented than me. Other people in my generation were much more talented than me. But practicing at home and doing some of these stupid things that sound trivial to you and unlearning some of the things that you have learned to do is the, is the, is the philosophy of, of, of improvement in the debates. Uh, so so, so that, that, that's it. But uh, let, me, let me return to, <laughs> towards, the, towards the topic of extension. So... The other thing, uh, the 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 uh, the other thing is just uh, what do you how do you interact with uh, how do you interact with the how do you say uh, with with the team uh, right right across in this sort of situation? How do you like like in this in this more rebuttal point in this sort of situation? Usually, and that's why I said at the beginning. At the beginning, you need to you need to have your case written before that point if you're writing your extension at the same time that the member of government is speaking it's very likely that you're in a panic mode that you're not going to listen to what they're saying and that you can miss some of the framing and some of the points or, or something else. you need to touch upon at least some of the points that, that they're talking about so yeah what i usually have for my uh, for the speaker that is coming right in front of me or something like this is usually i don't have a dedicated paper or something is but i just write specific things at least one thing that I want to touch upon that is the main point, especially if I'm closing opposition of their extension. So first of all, they cannot claim that I haven't responded to anything. I responded to something. I just didn't waste as much time as as, as I would or something is. But but secondly, if you're not going to cover something and if something is, is, is still important, but you feel that you don't have time to cover it, uh, that's the time to communicate with your partner very well uh, and be like, okay, uh, See, they have this point, uh, I'm not going to be able to cover it. And you need to be very, first of all, honest with yourself and honest with your partner so they, they, they know in advance or something like this. And it has to deal with now time and management, right? And uh, realizing what's your, how do you say, what's your ability, right? And being being honest with yourself. Usually the problem with people is, uh, and, and that, that's what sometimes happens. Sometimes people lose the debates. Uh, uh, how how to communicate in online events? <laughs> Again, be in the same room. The most important thing. Uh, the most important thing is to be in the same room. Uh, if not, uh, be be on the call. Be on the different call. Uh, like I, I'm like uh, I was on a I was on a separate call with. As I said, I debated I debated like I think two times with partner not in the room. Uh, I was in the uh, I think we were in the Discord uh, or something like this where where I could unmute and be like yeah. Dude, I'm not gonna cover this. Please, please do this. Or something is obviously chat is important, but chat needs to be structured. And that's what I hated. <laughs> why I hated and why still uh, being being in person is the most important thing. Um, because like I can literally tell to Yanko, nudge him or do something like this. Uh, but but to be honest, um, there, there is no again, there is no again um, correct answer towards this. Uh, you either are on the call and you, and, and you try to communicate like this or or you are or you are chatting my suggestion uh, is to try out a couple of different formats uh, and see what fits you the best uh, the best way to try it out is to just do some spars or do some like practice debates uh, but every time that you do it try some different form of communication because there might be some other things that you are so if you primarily communicate through uh, messages or something like this, then try to communicate, try next time you do spar, try to communicate via Discord, uh, like a voice, and see how that works. If it doesn't work, then you can afterwards have feedback and be like, ah, how can we improve this? Uh, then you, may, maybe notes doesn't work, maybe Google Docs. I know some people are using Google Docs where they can uh, do a bit more maneuvering and a bit, bit, bit more things. I think that that also can work. But the thing is, you need to how do you say try it's a bit of a trial and error if i was 
as I said, uh, right now I, I don't have, I, I'm not thinking about this that much because I'm not prepping for anything uh, because I'm pretty much done. Uh, but if I was, that would be the thing that I would be doing. If I was, and if my partner could not be in the same room as me, that would be the, the priority number one for us to do. We would be th thinking of, of like five or six different models of how can we best communicate and then trying them out, uh, combining them, uh, being like, okay, there's purely Discord. Okay, no, Discord doesn't work. Like purely Messenger, uh, purely uh, Google Docs or something is mixing Google Docs with Messenger, uh, mixing Google Docs with, with this pictures or something. It's, it's very important to, to figure out like four or five, four or five, I don't know, uh, templates and then see what works for you best. But the communication without this is going to very be very hard. You're going blind into, into the thing and it's, 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 not a, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good thing. So, 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 so uh, I'm sorry that I cannot answer these online uh, online things. I just haven't haven't really spent enough time uh, thinking about how I would personally optimize it because I've never had to. Uh, but the <laughs> best optimization is to figure out any way to be in the same room, and you'll see uh, it, it, it's better. Uh, but uh, what did I? Okay, but you need to you need to communicate you need to communicate properly. So usually. Uh, you cannot completely tune out, but sometimes, for example, when I'm a member of government, I tell to Yanko, okay, we're going to focus less a bit now. Uh, can you can you focus on getting everything that that the member of uh, that DLO is saying? For example, I'm focusing on on final touches of my speech or of thinking of something like this, and then he knows, right? Like I can, I, I'm I'm honest. If he cannot do it, if he cannot do it, he's preoccupied with something. He can tell me, uh, but he needs to know. Uh, that I'm going to be a bit tuned out and that I'm not going to pay attention to or, towards it. The, the worst thing in the world is to both be tuned out and then, then you miss something crucial or something. Else. It's okay sometimes to tune out. You know, this you cannot tune out completely. That's never an option. You need to be uh, able to, 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 to listen to some extent, but maybe you're not focusing on, on, on writing down full rebuttal to the deal or something like this. One more thing is uh, what to do in the last speech. And, and that's that's... <laughs> the tune out process right uh so so i usually call it like fine like like fine tuning like and getting ready for the speech um and uh, i i usually write very little uh, i usually write very little other than rebuttal in the speech right in front of me so that means that if i'm a member of opposition i write very little during member of government and i write very little during the dlo if i'm member of government in that sense what do i do in that time so in that time, ideally, I should have everything, uh, all of my extension written. Uh, so what am I doing? I am now rethinking and like like relooking at my papers and rethinking how would I structure uh, what I'm going to do. I'm returning to it because usually what people don't do uh, stupidly is uh, just write it once and then I'm gonna go out with this paper or something. But it's not. But uh, like some things changed, uh, some things need to be reworked or something like this. So I go over it again in a chronological order, how would I do the, do the speech? So I order my papers, uh, I order my papers and then I how do you say, I usually don't do it at the start of member of government. Let's say that I start to do it around third or fourth minute or something. So after I get the gist of what their extension is and I wrote some of the things, the next three minutes for me is literally sorting my, sh sorting my shit out and imagining myself giving a speech to some extent and being like, okay, uh, this, uh, this, this goes first, okay, uh, how long will it take me? And I'm subconsciously already thinking how long will things take me in giving myself some tests. And this is, this is coming from the, from the place of me being uh, historically terrible at time management. If you also struggle from time management, this is the time to do some other drastic things that I think are, can, can work. For example, uh, setting yourself hard time limits for some certain papers or something. So saying, okay, I'm gonna be finished with this paper by 1.15, or I'm gonna be finished with, with this part of the extension by 4 4 30 or something this this can help you very much you don't need to follow this like a bible but just thinking about this in advance uh before before you how they say give your speech is already a win you're already going to do it better because you're a bit more self-conscious and you're a bit more thinking about this uh, than anything else so i'm imagining my speech i'm going through it and i'm also trying to see couple of things one does the title make sense and that's something that i started to think about much much later in my career and i wished i thought about it a bit earlier because i thought it was bullshit who the fuck cares about the the statement and the title of the argument like it's just important what my logic is uh, that that's not true especially in the in the world where you do obviously have bad judges you obviously have people who do not listen to you the official statement of the things that you that you need to do uh, and i'm thankfully going to do a lecture on this soon 
I think next week, uh, uh, next week, uh, so so you can you can listen to more of the advice and the structure and the statements and all these things. But the gist of it, uh, you need to be able to anticipate where the argument is going from the statement. If that's not true, then your statement sucks and you need to rework it at that time. And that's the time to you for you to return to it when you know the full thing and when you know what is the whole thing that you want to want to or want to do uh, in your speech. It's the best time to try and rethink, is this a good enough statement? Is this clear enough? Will the judge be able to follow? Uh, will the judge be able to imagine where I'm going if I say just this sentence? Uh, why is this important? Just briefly, humans tend to, and that's a super cool ESL trick as well. Uh, humans, especially if they don't understand you, tend to fill in the gaps themselves, right? In order for them to be able to fill in the gaps, they need to know where you're going, which means that if they know very clearly where you're going, it's much more likely for them to fill in the gaps for you, even if they don't understand what the word, single word that you're saying. So if they're racist and they don't, don't uh, they, they are uh, ESL biased, they don't know uh, what you're talking about. If you're very clear at the beginning, it's much, much easier for them to infer some of the things. And that's how human psychology works in most cases. It's such a huge it's a huge thing uh it, 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 it can save you so many times uh so many times just just sitting down and th rethinking what you said at the beginning usually people write it at the beginning and then forget it the best way is just to after you have everything written down to return to it and think about how can i improve this how can i improve the clarity of this that's a very important thing uh second important thing is to think <clears throat> to just go through the logic and see is the paper become too messy? What has happened? Uh, do you need to add something? Do we have something to add? So that's the time to do some final touches, right? You maybe remember something additional that you want to write down or, or something like this. So that, that's the final touches thing. Um, uh, and, and as I said, anticipate how much time will it take you. That, as I said, oftentimes the timeline is I write my speech during LO almost full of my speeches done. Maybe I, I tag, uh, like if I'm closing a position, maybe I get a bit, bit of DPM and then I give it to my partner. My partner gives me feedback already around the DPM DLO time. And from that point onward, I'm pretty much doing the fine tuning of this. I can focus on other things. I can even ask a POI. Uh, I can do whatever the fuck I want. And the three minutes before I'm about to speak uh, or four minutes or however much you need, <laughs> you think you need, uh, you completely focus on how they say, okay, I have a speech in my hand. Border, uh, border, uh, borderline. Uh, the speaker uh, before me throwing like a like a like a complete bomb in the debate and like completely changing what the fuck is happening. I'm pretty much going to deliver this speech. Nothing is pretty much going to change except for minor points. Let me do a rebuttal. Let me let me change something. But it's it's too late at this time. If something dramatic happens at fifth minute of member of government speech uh, that that wins the debate. You, you're pretty much fucked either way. Uh, if it's that dramatic, if it's not, then obviously you need to react fast. But at that time, it's your time to gather your thoughts and your time to, to uh, how do you say, go virtually and mentally through the speech and then fix some of the things that you would, wouldn't, in the rush, wouldn't otherwise think about statement, time management, structure, and, and how are you how are you handling the things? And that, that's that's super important. Oftentimes people just do this when they go on the stage and say, give me, let me sort my papers. And then I take five minutes to sort their papers because they haven't done what I said during, during the speech. Uh, and then lastly, for this, for this lecture, and, and then that's it. Like afterwards, you just deliver a speech. <laughs> you just deliver a speech and you hope for the best, pray for the best uh, and something like this. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna cover POI strategy, uh, POI strategies or something like this. Oftentimes, if you want to take the POI from your, like, like if you want to take the POI from your opening, it's good to take it to take it in the member speech, because if they completely fuck you, uh, your whip speaker has the ability to 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 return to it and and the answer it in a bit more depth. So I usually like to take opening from uh, from member if I can. Uh, obviously, if the debate has shifted completely, so the opening argument is completely out of the debate, uh, then my partner will take it. I, I'll take I'll take closing government or something like this, but. But to be honest, to be honest, uh, that's all that I have to say for 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 POIs. But uh, last thing, after I'm done speaking, what I usually like to do uh, is uh, 
because you, usually after you're done speaking, you're kind of useless. You're just sitting around. Maybe you're thinking of a POI or something like this. But as an extension speaker, you only have one chance to give a POI. Usually, uh, no, no, but maybe two if you're if you're closing government or something like this. But usually, there is a bit more uh, usefulness that you can that you can provide, which is you just ask your partner, and that's also for your partner to think about how can you help them. And the way to help them is usually to just write something. Uh, they give you a small task. Think about it like how you would do in the work. Uh, think about them as your manager. Uh, so, so usually, usually uh, my partner uh, Yanko, for, and th th we do that for top half as well. But for WIP, it's, it's also maybe even more important. Which is he tells me, can you sum up five reasons why uh, for this point that you said? And I sum it up for him and write it, write it like uh, in this online setting. You can even write him in the in the word document, or you can write him somehow in the chat. Give me five reasons for that. Maybe you even think of a sixth or seventh reason while you're thinking about this, because now at this time your mind is completely free. To, to tunnel vision on a single thing. You can obviously, there, there is nothing else for you to do except ask POI. And then uh, you can pretty much do ask, you, you can think about asking a POI and, and focusing on a specific task. That's why WIP speakers should potentially also have a task ready. Obviously, if you, if you, if you can handle everything on your own, fine, but usually delegating something and being like, okay, uh, Milos, can you uh, can you remember this thing from opening government? Can you figure out three responses towards it? And then what I'm doing is only thinking, figuring out a couple of responses towards one point, or I'm I'm summing up uh, my reasons and my mechanization for extension, or I'm doing something like this. So just ask your partner to give you a task, and you as a partner, if you're a whip speaker, give your partner a task. Just give something, delegate something, because what you also need to do, I'm not, I've not haven't been covered covering whip speakers because it's extension workshop. Uh, but but as a whip speaker, you also need to be gathering your thoughts last three minutes of the speech. You cannot be writing fully new things or something like this. It's, it's, it's a bit more chill in, in, the, in that manner, unless you're government whip, which uh, <laughs> rip if you are. Uh, but uh, but in that sense, in that sense, uh, delegating, delegating and thinking of a specific task, okay, uh, Give me this. Give me that. Give me differentiation. You can also give it. You can also tell. Uh, can you can you tell me why this argument is important, more important than the other argument? Or can you tell me? But be specific. Don't be. Give me why we win. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, give your partner and think about. Give your partner a specific thing that you can do. Or if you're a, an extension speaker, you can also think of your own task potentially and suggest it or something is. But that's a. Uh, like a, a small optimization, right? Like as you go into the date, you start to optimize everything possible, right? To be as efficient as possible. And this this has worked in the past. This has made us in some cases have five or six responses towards a single thing. It's not necessarily because uh, uh, like obviously Yanko is a god, so, so he knows how to do seven, seven or six responses. But sometimes it's just, how do you say, uh, me being able to, to, to think of six or seven responses just thinking about that while he's paneling on all of the other things. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a good, uh, good thing. <laughs> so that's how to be a good, good boy, uh, good boy speaker, good boy extension speaker. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this workshop. Obviously, there are some other things, and this is more of a meta workshop, right? Be, uh, and that kind of is very usually very hard to do because, uh, especially for extensions, because in order for me to give you an example, I would have to retell you the whole debate or something. So it's very hard. So I focused on some of the practical to dos that you can talk about. If I had to sum up, obviously you can ask me questions for like, I'm here for another, let's say five minutes. Uh, but uh, to sum up what I, what are the to do's for you? One, focus on the, focus on the tracking, focus on practicing your tracking skill and everybody can become better at this. I am, I can, if I wanted to improve upon this, I could improve upon this. I'm still sometimes tunnel vision. I'm still sometimes losing some things uh, and not noticing some things. I've become much better at this. Uh, but uh, as I said, the best way to practice it, fire up a debate and give yourself a task. Uh, don't write anything and write a speech while listening to some some good speaker speak or something like this, and then that will be that will be uh, that will be your brain training. And just by continuously practicing this, you will become better and increasing the difficulty. As I said, uh, having a, having uh, increased speed or giving yourself additional tasks both ways, like in the gym, to increase the the the, the exercise difficulty. If you if you can uh, beat uh, uh, Papa John on like one point five. 
uh, uh, like and give your extension, write your extension speech, uh, then then you can pretty much do it to anybody else. And that's <laughs> that's that's a key takeaway. Second of all, practice your papers and figure out the best way uh, that your that your partner can read your papers and communicate through them. Uh, best way to do it after after the competition. If you don't want to be weird and just write an extension speech, just the next comp or next spar that you have, just give them your papers and be like, hey. Could you give a speech with this? And then they will tell you, no, yes, I understand this, I understand that. And really take this feedback. I know it's the easiest thing to just continue to do the same thing as you have always done. But it's it, honestly, it's I cannot under, overstate how uh, easy it is to fix uh, versus how much improvement you can gain. And people are very stubborn with this. They're like, ah, I write how I write. Ah, fuck that. Fuck the stubbornness. Easiest way for you to improve as an ESL speaker is to write better. Do it. Uh, and I'm going to cover this a bit more as well in my next lecture uh, I'm, uh, next week, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, when I talk about the structure. Uh, and, and, the last thing, uh, and the last thing is, uh, how do you say, when you start to write the extension and, and how you conduct that. Uh, so, yeah, most of the things that I told you is, is actionable. Don't, you don't need to pick everything. Pick two or three things that you want to take action upon and just do it. Uh, but don't let this be <laughs> one more of the lectures that you watch and then uh, uh, you try to remember once the time comes, ah, what did Milos say? I don't remember. Oh, fuck it. Let me just do whatever the fuck I want. Just just give yourself tasks and be like, yeah, uh, I'm going to forget Milos, but I'm not going to forget his ideas. And I will be very happy if that happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you don't have any further questions, I need to get back to work as well. Uh, such is the life of a consultant. Uh, I need to work at 9, 8 p.m. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, I think there isn't. Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Sorry. If you have some questions that you want to shoot, you can also shoot them through the ORCOM and they can forward it to me and I'll try to answer or do something like this. But. But yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you guys for listening. I hope this was helpful uh, and practical for you. Yeah. yeah. I think this is like really amazing workshop because you just go step by step to every step of extension. I think it's really helpful. Thanks, Mills. Thank you. Thank you and see you at the tournament, right? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>